So let's talk about kashrut for just a couple of minutes, and let's figure out what it's doing over here. So the Torah starts to list various creatures that are kasher, and what makes, actually I always say, it's not a mitzvah to eat kosher. It's not a mitzvah to eat kosher. There's just an avera to eat not kosher. So it's actually part of the lotaseh, the forbidden acts in the Torah. You've got to eat kosher. You've got to eat. Okay? If you've got to eat, you might as well eat kosher food because you can't eat non-kosher food. So it's actually a lotaseh. And we're told that every animal that we want to eat, a behemah, must have shte simanim, two simanim, two signs. What are the two signs for every kosher animal? Everyone knows this. It needs to have a split hoof, a completely split hoof, right? Parsa, parsa, bishot sesha. A complete split tooth. Why? Could an animal have a partially split tooth? Yeah. Like a giraffe, right? A giraffe. A gamal has a partially split tooth. It's split on top, but there's a webbing. There's a webbing. Sorry, I take that back. I take that back. A gamal is a camel. Giraffe's a kosher. You're right, 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 right. Very good. I see your faces. I'm sorry. Giraffe is kosher. A camel. A gamal. A camel. I said giraffe. A camel. It's split on top, but it's got webbing underneath. Hashem did a very special favor because it's got to go into the sand. So there's a webbing underneath. So a camel is not kosher, but it does have one sign. It's malegera. It chews the cud. So you see camels walking around like, you know, constantly chewing, although they haven't eaten in a while. Okay, so a camel has that. A giraffe actually is a kosher animal as a side point. We just don't eat it because... They're pretty much restricted to be eaten. And we, people say, oh, when I was a kid, they said, they don't know where to shecht it on the long neck. That's ridiculous. They know exactly how to kill it, right? It's just a protective species and probably not so tasty, very muscly and uh, not very fatty animal. So, but if you were and you needed to, you would be permitted to uh, eat a giraffe. But a camel is not kosher. So everything needs to have two simanim. It needs to have a split tooth and chew the gun. There is one animal, by the way, that the Torah pulls out from all the other behemoth that has the other way around. It's got a split tooth, but it doesn't chew the cud. And that is the? Oh, you're going, the pig, the chazir. By the way, the Torah tells us, this is amazing. Think about this. The Torah tells us this is the only animal, the only one that is going to have this way around. Split tooth, but does not chew the cud. Once it eats, that's the end of it. It's like a human. It passes right through. By the way, how could the Torah say this? Only Hashem can say it, because maybe they'd discover an animal a thousand years later that actually does this as well. Torah says, no, no, this is the only animal. And by the way, if you look at it, it is the only animal ever. It's a big claim for the Torah to make, but only Hashem's Torah can do this, that this animal is the only animal. By the way, why do we pick on the pig? I feel sorry for the pig sometimes. Why do we pick on the chazir more than every other animal? Why does the chazir get such a bad rap? You know, it's actually worse, la halakha, to eat an insect deliberately than a pig. Because it's a crawling and a flying creature. So it's actually, there's more isurim to eat an insect than there is a pig. Right? And yet, we don't say, oh, the fly, that's a bad creature. Right? The mosquito, the locust, well, the locust kosher. Right? We don't say that, yeah? So why do we pick on the pig? Great question. I'll give you a couple of very interesting answers. Number one is, we don't like the pig because it's a liar. It's faking you out. What's it saying? Look, I'm kosher. I've got a split hoof. But inside, you're not kosher. Your insides don't match your outsides. We don't like that. That is a bad siman of any animal and any human. Your outsides, your actions, the way you present yourself, should ideally match your insides. And so the pig is the only animal that does that. Its outsides are inconsistent with what's happening inside. Another not kosher animal, it's honest. It's honest. It's outside is not kosher. It's inside is not kosher. We get it, you know, but not the pig. The pig is trying to fake you out. Another deeper reason about the pig is the pig represents certain nations of the world who present themselves as kosher on the outside, like Esav. Esav and his descendants, they present themselves kosher on the outside, but inside they're rotten to the core, right? They're not malagera. They don't chew the cud. So we don't like that. We don't like fake people. If you want to be fake, we don't want you to be fake. If you want to lie, if you want to be non kosher, gay gesund. Just make sure your outsides match your insides in your non kosherness. Okay. I want to share with you, we'll finish with this because we've extended our time. Just one more minute. The Ramban says these animals that are listed that have these traits have something in common. 
what do all kosher animals, for the most part, I should say, and most non-kosher animals have in common? And the Ramban says this, and it's actually according to Kabbalah. The Kabbalists talk about it. You'll notice that most kosher animals are prey. They are the prey. I don't mean prey, P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y, right? They are attacked by the animals. Most non-kosher animals, non-kosher, are the predator. And the Ramban says very famously that what you eat is going to become who you are. All right? I don't like the expression, you are what you eat, because I eat chicken, I'm not a chicken, and I eat cow, right? and I'm not a cow. However, you can't say you are what you eat, but you can say what you eat becomes who you are. It affects your neshama. Therefore, for example, you can't drink the blood of an animal. That's an isur do'oraita. You cannot drink the blood of an animal. Actually, human blood is also forbidden, but only rabbinically. When the Torah talks about don't drink blood, it actually means animal blood. Human blood is also basically, if you have a cut on your, you shouldn't lick it. It's rabbinically prohibited as a side point. You should know that. But in the Torah, it's the animal. Why? Because when you drink the blood and we eat the meat of an unkosher animal, it ends up impacting your neshama and making you take on the character traits of that animal. That's why you see lions and tigers and such animals and vultures and other animal creatures that attack and are predators. We don't eat. We eat the prey. We want to have a certain gentle nature to ourselves and that is reflected by the food that we eat. That, my, set, my friends, is one of the secrets behind the kashrut. And that for it's going to affect your midot. So the rabbis, that's the connection over here. Why is kashrut popping up over here? Well, it kind of makes sense. We're about to enter into Israel, dealing with animals and livestock. So much Ben is telling you, you're going to have lots of sheep and animals and stay away from the pigs. Stay away from the boars, right? Stay away from them. But also, it comes from this. Your midot are important too. And your midot relate to other people and to Hashem are important. Don't forget to eat kosher food because that's going to affect your neshama and your midot as well. One last story, I apologize. I've ever extended my time. There was a letter that was sent to the Rambam from the Jews in Yemen. The Jews in Yemen are obsessed with the Rambam. They love the Rambam. They actually follow the Rambam, la halakha. They don't follow the Shulchan Aruch. They follow the Rambam. If you're Yemenite, the Rambam is Kadosh because he saved their lives. He actually helped them uh, when it came to a lot of false Mashiachs they had to deal with. So they followed. So there was a letter they said and said, a lot of the kids in Yemen were going off the derech. They were leaving the path. So the Rambam wrote back to them. The Rambam wrote back to them and said, check, this is the story, check the knife of the shochet, the ritual slaughterer. Check his knife. So they did, and they saw there were nicks in it that rendered it non-kosher, which made the animals that it killed also non-kosher. Right? By the way, they said it was a, 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 an accidental mistake, but he wasn't checking his knife well enough. He needed to sharpen his knife. They ended up checking it. They fixed it. And they said all the kids who were off started to start to eat kosher food again, and they all came back. Is there a connection? I don't know. And it's very out of characteristic with a rumbum to say such a thing, but it's based upon this concept that it, what the food you eat affects your midot. It affects your connection. Non-kosher food is metamtem et It blocks your heart. Says Rashi, it stops your sechel from working. That is why we put so much emphasis on kashrut, trying our utmost to make sure the, sure the food that goes into us is of the right status, to make sure that it affects the neshama in the right way. Wishing you all a very successful uh, day. Chazak Baruch.